Hey everybody, welcome to a, another lesson of learning Japanese. In our last video, we covered how to say that something becomes an adjective or a noun. This time, we're going to cover basically a grammar pattern that is kind of a sibling to that grammar pattern, and that is how to say to make something become an adjective or a noun. So, for example, in English, this might be something along the lines of to make your house prettier. And the reason why this grammar pattern is so associated with that previous one to become a verb or a noun with the verb naru is because it's basically the same thing, it just uses the verb suru instead to mean to make and we conjugate the adjectives and the nouns the same exact way. So with that said and done, now let's just jump into some example sentences to get a clear idea of what this actually means. So for our first example sentence, we have the line kami o chotto mijikaku shite kudasai. And what this line translates to is basically please make my hair a bit shorter and the context here of course is maybe you're talking to the barber at a barber shop or you're just saying it to your friend who's volunteered to cut your hair or something. So if we break down the sentence bit by bit, first up we have the word kami which means hair. We have o which is the direct object marker marking hair as the direct object of the verb that's about to come but before that we have the adverb choto which means a bit and then we have mijikaku which means short but here it's being used in this grammar pattern so that's why we have it in its ku form instead of its regular form which is mijikai. Uh, then we have the verb suru just like the grammar pattern uh, needs to be able to be used but we change that into its te form plus adding the word kudasai after it to mean please make. So all together kami o choto mijikaku shite kudasai means please make my hair a bit shorter. For our next example sentence we have the line kono keiki o okiku shimashou ka and what this line translates to is basically shall we make this cake bigger and of course the answer to that would be yes but if we're breaking down the sentence first up we have kono keiki which means this cake kono means this keiki means cake we have the direct object particle o to mark cake as the direct object of the verb that's about to come but of course before that we have to have the adjective that we need to use which is o kiku and this is the ku form of the verb o ki which means big so now we know that it's going to mean make bigger after o kiku we have shimashouka and and shimashouka is the verb suru in its masho form plus the particle ka the masho form basically means let's do and the ka here is turning into a question so it's more so shall we do and what are we doing well the direct object is the cake we know that from the direct object marker o and then we have okiku so we know that this grammar pattern is being used so make bigger shall we make this cake bigger kono keiki o okiku shimashou ka for our next example sentence we have the line toshokan ni iru kara shizuka ni shite kudasai and what this line translates to is basically because you're in a library or since you're in a library please make yourself quiet if we break this sentence down bit by bit, first up we have toshokan ni. Toshokan is library, ni is marking library as a location. We have the existential verb iru that is being used to describe the addressee of the line. So you are in a library. Uh, then we have the conjunction kara to mean because. So then that becomes because you are in a library. After that, we have the second clause, which is shizuka ni shite kudasai. Shizuka is a na adjective, it means quiet. We're using the grammar construct here, so we add the ni particle after shizuka. Uh, then we have suru, which is in its te form, shite. Uh, then we have kudasai to mean please do. But since this is the grammar pattern, this is going to be make instead of do. So please make yourself quiet is what this translates to basically. The word yourself here isn't really mentioned literally, but it's implicit. And uh, then we combine that part of the sentence with the first part. So toshokan ni iru kara shizuka ni shite kudasai translates to because you're in a library, please make yourself quiet or please make yourself quiet since you're in a library. For our next example sentence, we have the line kyoshitsu o kirei ni shimashita. Let's break down the sentence bit by bit. First up, we have kyoshitsu, which means classroom. We have o marking classroom as a direct object. We have kirei, which is the not adjective, which means clean or beautiful. We're going to add the particle ni right after that because we're using this grammar construct. Uh, then we have the verb suru in its past polite form, which is shimashita. The subject here isn't mentioned, but it's implied to be me or the speaker. So I made the classroom beautiful or clean. And this could be loosely translated to I cleaned the classroom. And now for our last example sentence, we have the line dare o oni ni shimashou ka. And what this translates to is who should we make the oni and the oni 
means the ogre or the demon here and the cultural context is that this is the title used to mean the person who is it. So the actual context here is probably a bunch of kids are playing the game of tag and they're trying to decide who should be it. Let's break down the sentence bit by bit. First up we have dare which means who. We have o marking who as the direct object. We have oni ni so oni is a noun it means ogre or demon but in this case let's just say it as in the person who's it in this game of tag. We have ni because that's the particle we use for nouns when we're using this grammar construct and then we have again shimashouka which is the masho form of the verb sudu followed by ka to make it into a question so who shall we do but since this is the grammar construct it's who shall we make so who shall we make it is what the sentence is dare o oni ni shimashouka that's what it translates to so yeah that is how we use this grammar construct to express making something, making it into an adjective such as clean or bigger or something like that, or making it into a noun such as the person who is it in this game of tag. And it's pretty simple and it's really closely associated with that other one to become an adjective or a noun. And yeah, they're pretty close. And if you forget one of them, you can always refer to the technique of the other one to memorize the one that you forgot. And yeah, 